Hey there guys, Brad from Canine Services and today's Ask Brad is a question from Jeff and Jeff's question uh, stems from, he's observed in some of the training videos that I've posted of myself working with Snap that I often wind up handy, holding an e-collar transmitter in my hand and many of you will also be able to see that uh, in almost every video there's an e-collar transmitter fitted to Snap. So uh, you may not see in every video that I post or have posted about Snap that I'm using an e-collar. Although, uh, and when I say I'm using it, I may not be applying it, okay? But uh, I work with what we'll call um, subjectively low levels of stimulation for the dog. I work at what James Penrith uh, from England has appropriately termed point of perception and adjustment, POPA training. So. Uh, it's, it's really about finding what the dog perceives and working in graduated steps relating to that to achieve your outcomes. So in relation to my e-collar, um, snaps, oh, I've bumped it slightly. Snaps working level is typically speaking a seven. So the way that I have my collar set up, I have two stimulus levels. Now this is basic level stuff before we get into how I actually handle it. Um, the, this particular collar is a PE900. It's from a company called Educator. If you want one, uh, we, we are a reseller for Educator. Go ahead and reach out and we can look at whether it's an appropriate training tool for you. And if so, how do we get one to you? So uh, I've been using this for years. It's been beaten to shit. It's been thrown, dropped, it's been in water, whatever else, incredibly reliable for me. Never had a problem with it over all the years that I've been using it and other people have used it and I've, I've given it to friends on trial and whatever else, I've replaced one uh, collar receiver unit. So anyway, I love this thing. Now, uh, certainly there are more and more uh, what we'll call hands-free e-collar units coming onto the market. Typically speaking, the price point for these is uh, well above what you would pay for a handheld transmitter. Uh, by way of comparison, you let's just say that you spent 500 on this, you'd spend 2,500 or more to get a collar with any number of features attached to um, a wireless setup. So the step up is massive for what you get and essentially what you really get in practical terms uh, is, is the predominant benefit is going to be hands-free operation. So the pressing of a button that's affixed to your finger as opposed to having to have this, collar un uh, this transmitter unit in your hand. All of that's going to be an advantage, of course, but this is what I use and this is what I've used for a long time and I'm really comfortable with that and I make it work and this is how I do that. So the way that I have my collar set up, I have vibration and tone buttons here and there's a reason that I have them there. They're easy for me to reach with my thumb if I need to. I don't use them nearly as often. Um, on the near side, what I'll call the near side, on the thumb side of my uh, Pro Educator, my PE900, We've got programming buttons. They're not functional in terms of training unless you're changing the function on the unit and, and asking perhaps asking the receivers to do something different. Um, my thumb is on the volume switch so I can turn this up and down as required. And I have these two outside buttons programmed. The top button is the delivery of seven. If I need to, I can bump from there and you'll see that that delivers uh, a stimulus level of 18. Of course, this is not fitted to my dog. The collar unit is not fitted to my dog at the moment. So, uh, my I use a different lanyard to this. This is the clicker closest to me that I grabbed off the table, uh, but this will work to explain. I, I use something to help to keep it in place, and I tend to use this button, this finger, sorry, to click. I fit the receiver in my hand. Now for the majority of work that I do, I only need this finger in contact. I can very quickly add or subtract the finger if I need to bump this up because the dog's level of arousal has taken, it, it's taken the dog to a point where I require further stimulation in order to be salient to the dog. It's another conversation we can have another time. So this is typically how I handle this collar. Uh, transmitter sorry and the collar unit has the receivers attached to it so the bit you see fitted to snap in the videos is a receiver this is the transmitter this is where all the work happens and the receiver is where 
whatever you do here is received. So that's the way that I handle this. It offers me enough flexibility. I can move around fairly easily with it, but there are times when having this transmitter is definitely detrimental to what I'm trying to do. And I do some more complex things with Snap and being a more experienced dog trainer, I use a ton of different options to make that work. So obviously I'm wearing a training vest. Frequently, because I use the, the style of training that I do, there's a lot of food used and, and I would often use my left hand, but there are certain times that I definitely would prefer to use my right hand. And where that happens, this e-collar can simply get dropped in this pocket. I tend to put it in in a certain way. When I put it in, I always try and stick the aerial into the corner because that way I know that the buttons my fingers need to hit are pointing down. So that way when I reach in, I can pull it out and I come out with my fingers already on there. And I've learned to do that over a period of time. Um, I always handle the collar in the same way. So it definitely helps with that. I'm extremely familiar with what the collar feels like. So I don't have to take my attention off the dog. So of course, because of the way that my clicker is set up, there's something holding it to my wrist. I've found some options better than others. I, I use a, I have a self-made option that I uh, myself and some of my friends use and, and really enjoy. That's how I'm set up. Nearly all the time I'm going to want a clicker, at least one clicker on my body. If I want to quickly dispense, uh, say, a, a tug to snap to play with her, I, can, I would usually have this set up. I can just drop that clicker and bring that out. But of course, I've got to do something with the collar in the meantime. So if the collar's in my hands like this, if you look at the aerial, and this is a fairly new aerial, I, um, I broke the aerial because I mistreated the collar unit. You'll see all those bite marks around it. It's because I'm always sticking it in my teeth. If I need to play tug with my dog and I know that I may need the collar in order to do some drills, I can do that. Now I can play with a dog. Of course, the other, uh, as I've already covered, sticking it in this pocket is also an option. That's how I run things. So there's no wrong and there's no right. There's what offers you advantage and what offers you advantage in one context may offer you uh, less advantage in another and you need to change the way that you practice. But this way of handling things for me has worked really well. Uh, I've never really had a problem with it. I've never had a uh, hands-free e-collar unit uh, and I don't miss what I've never had. I managed to get by uh, with, with very little impact. Certainly it would be easier, but there you go. There's a nice detailed answer for Jeff. I hope that I've covered everything in this. Um, you know, if, if you dig this video, if you like seeing the way that we um, have run things, I can talk you through other aspects, just shout out and uh, we'll do what we can to get this out to you today and look forward to your feedback. Hope it's helpful guys. Take care and have a great day.